Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks, and thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio, and of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, It has been since yesterday evening since I conducted a broadcast, and I want to extend my sincerest apologies to anybody who listened to yesterday's broadcast. I was uh, sipping on Grandpa's old cough medicine and maybe had a little bit too many to drink and uh, decided to conduct a show, and and I unearthed a lot of uh, deep-seated ideas and and frustrations, and I don't even want to talk about it. But we're going to get into all that in just a second. Uh, This is episode number 163 for all the folks that are keeping track with the True Conservative Radio program. Uh, We're going to talk about a variety of different subject matters this evening. But, of course, the main focus and the main subject matter of tonight's program is the coming American loser revolution that is coming upon us. And for folks that haven't been keeping up with the blog, I strongly advise you to please... A bookmark or add to your favorites the True Conservative blog at ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And, of course, folks, if you want to find out when I'm going to conduct these broadcasts live instead of uh, downloading, it, excuse me, downloading it through the podcast or listening to it through the archive, uh, by all means, folks, follow me on Twitter. It's the best and fastest opportunity to figure out when I'm going to conduct these broadcasts. And, of course, the name to follow is Ghost Politics. All one word and no underscores. Uh, Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the subject matter. Of course, we're going to go back and forth into the main theme of the program, and that's the coming American loser revolution. And I got a little bit into it last evening, but I'm going to get a little bit into it this evening because I think that it's a very important subject matter that we need to discuss. I have come to the conclusion that the possibility of civil unrest – The possibility of violent civil unrest on our domestic soil is highly probable. And I'm not saying that because I want unfortunate violent acts to happen. It's not because I'm trying to uh, hope for them in any manner. I don't want that. I've been up here attempting to tell individuals that the only thing that they have to do to take back their country is to get up off their fat jelly asses, you know, stop watching, you know, gay bondage with Adam Lambert and American Idol, and go out there and organize people behind a political subject matter or a political philosophy or a political idea. But instead, everybody just decided to just ignore it and maybe it'll go away. And as a result, we have assholes for politicians that are doing nothing but selling us out right from underneath our noses, and all we're doing is, you know, with our hands out, uh, looking for another stimulus package check. I mean, nobody's demanding opportunity out here anymore. I mean, everybody's just uh, asking for another housing voucher program, asking for another food card, welfare, any other damn federal bureaucratic crap they can shove down into their pockets. And I don't know about you folks, I'm a taxpayer, right? I'm a businessman. I belong to my local chamber of commerce, folks, and it sickens me. It utterly sickens my stomach that I actually have to conduct myself as a businessman in this loser America. And why? Why is it a loser America? Why is there an impending American loser revolution happening upon us? Well, folks, for none other reason than our own ignorance, our own gluttony, and our own stupidity and materialism. Now let me explain what is happening here right before our very eyes, folks. And for you folks that have uh, kept up to date with the program and the blog, well, this is just going to go ahead and underscore what I've always said for the past almost four years here on the broadcast. What we have witnessed right before our very eyes is an unraveling of our economic system. 
And the reason our economic system has unraveled is because our stupid, ignorant American masses that were hypnotized by liberal and feminist Hollywood, that were hypnotized by these uh, you know, uh, stars that they're so star-fetished for, they were, they were uh, bamboozled into believing that they could be uh, big stars and ballers and you know, wear gold chains or well, whatever kind of life that was implanted or suggested in their subconscious via the entertainment industry. A lot of these ass clowns decided, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out and I'm going to live like I saw on the television. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to live like I saw on the television, and I don't care how I get the material. I, I, I want it now. And as a result, folks, for the past 25, 30 years, everybody decided to take out large quantities of credit and decided to just wing it, you know, decided to live paycheck to paycheck, you know. They decided to go out, and uh, because they made three or $4,000 a month, they decided to get about $3,800 a month in uh, credit card payments, whether that's financing furniture, a house, a car, credit cards, whatever the case might be. We had individuals legitimately max out their credit. And I'm not just talking about the unsecured credit debt, uh, you know, that's credit cards, plastic. I'm talking about the secured debt. And for you economics majors, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Secured debt is the most integral uh, fi financial instrument of our society. And for you idiots that are not uh, familiar with what the hell secured debt is, that means that these banks where individuals go and get their car little uh, – their, their car payments, their car finance through – where these people get their houses financed through, these idiots actually uh, get lent this money through the bank, and this this money doesn't come from the bank's ass, all right? I mean, the bank just, doesn't just crap out this money. It's your savings account, all right? It's your savings account where this is gra grabbed from. That's what secure debt is. So every ass clown that decided to go out there and finance a $250,000 home on a $25,000 a year income, they were using your capital. They were using your money. And you see, folks, this is what has unraveled our whole economic system, the fact that individuals are fit, were fiscally irresponsible with their own personal lives, with their own personal finances, and because they bit off more than they can chew, and the economy retracted because, folks, we did have an unbelievable economic retraction. Not only did we lose vast amounts of jobs in the blue-collar sector, but we had white-collar jobs be just uh, completely uh, annihilated. I mean, we, we saw a mass amounts of layoffs of journalists. So if you happen to be going to college to become a journalist, uh, you, you know, you're up a panel without a you-know-what, or whatever the hell the saying goes. Uh, we had 15% uh, uh, lawyers being laid off all the corporate firms all over the country. Uh, we had all kinds of uh, layoffs of white-collar jobs. I mean, it extended to, uh, to deep portions of our economy. And as a result, we had these individuals who were expecting, you know, these individuals were expecting income on a monthly basis. They got laid off, and lo and behold, they could no longer maintain the payments for their secured debt or their unsecured debt. So you know what these idiots did? You know what these morons did? Instead of actually paying for their house and their cars, which were, you know, secure debt, you know, you know, which is secure debt. That means it's backed up by your savings accounts. So uh, they decided that, uh, oh, I'm not going to pay my house. I'm not going to pay my car. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pay my credit cards so I can have more money to spend uh, out here at the mall buying products from China. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. And that's what every idiot in America, that's what every loser in this damn country decided to do. They decided to go out and, uh, you know, spend like it was going out of style. And they decided to, I I instead of using the remainder of their money to pay their secure debt, they decided to pay off their credit cards so they can go out and use their credit card to go out to the mall. And get the, you know, what is it, the, the uh, $90 Ed Hardy T-shirt that's straight out of China. Uh, you know, the, to get the technological gidget, uh, white widgets that were uh, yeah, made from China. It's disgusting. All right? It's utterly disgusting, and it makes me sick to my stomach that we are living in this modern-day America. So what happened after that, folks? Well, they couldn't pay for their houses. They couldn't pay for their cars. 
And as a result, uh, last year, uh, during the TARP, when all this, this little TARP arrangement was being concocted in our Congress and our Senate and our, uh, our government, you know, that, that, you know, let's go back to the TARP incident. If TARP had not been enacted, if they, had they not put forth that uh, uh, TARP uh, att- that, that attempt at trying to reestablish some sort of stability in our economy, folks, we would have been doomed. All the money that you put into your bank account would have been jeopardized. I mean, we already had, at the time, we had uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, we had these individuals going down. And and anybody who had money in that firm at the time, they didn't know if they were going to be able to even uh, recoup it. And for you morons that don't understand, uh, the bank is only secured $250,000 of those funds that you deposit in the bank. All right? If you're one of these morons that's like, oh, yeah, I got $3 $3 million, and I'm depositing it all in one bank. You're an idiot. You're an utter moron. You're, you're the reason why these fat cats in Washington, or excuse me, Wall Street and, 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 and the banks uh, had a field day during the past 25 years, giving you idiots all these ridiculous financial instruments. And whose fault was it, really? I mean, was it the, uh, you know, the financial institution's fault because they didn't you know, tell you step by step? about, you know, contract law and about, you know, if you sign something, you're pretty much bounded to it uh, by law? Uh, Absolutely not. Uh, And what's really unfortunate is that now that all this is unraveled and all the people couldn't pay for their homes any longer and we have the unraveling of the real estate market, and let me tell you, we've only hit the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the real estate debacle. I mean, we this is just the tip of the iceberg. I have suggested before that this coming summer, until the uh, I think till 2014, we're going to see uh, you know mounds of these uh, different kinds of financial instruments that were used to finance homes uh, in America and also uh, used to finance uh, commercial property in America that are not going to be paid, and it's going to be another f- real estate bailout. It's going to be another bailout for the real estate industry. Because the real estate debacle that is pending that hasn't fully hit America at this point in time is going to not only bring the uh, price of property down, uh, but it could literally have a serious economic impact to the point where, I, I mean, I don't know what the hell could happen. I mean, you have to, you have to understand that we are going to have a bust in commercial real estate, and it depends on what part of the country you're living in now. It depends on what part of the country you're living in now. You're already seeing that particular idea. You're already seeing that particular scenario of all these desolate and uh, run-down, boarded-up commercial pieces of real estate that are for sale, that are for lease. And let me tell you something, folks. Those people uh, that are putting up those for lease signs on those real estate, commercial real estate, they're not paid for. They're still paying banknotes and financial instruments and fluctuating rates on that commercial real estate. I'm talking about the developers. I'm talking about the landlords of these commercial pieces of real estate. And I'm telling you, folks, these fluctuating rates on these financial instruments that were signed by these uh, uh, you know, losers in America, these individuals are not going to be able to pay it, and it's going to be chaos once again in the economic system. And, I, and mark my word, and for you folks that have been listening to me on a consistent basis, you know that I am the political prognosticators of political prognosticators. But mark my word, starting this summer, you're going to start seeing economic turbulence in the real estate market, not only in the residential real estate market, but the commercial real estate market. All right, and I think it's uh, unbelievably disgusting. We're going to start talking about re- bank bailouts for the real estate market. Uh, we're going to start talking about all kinds of uh, ridiculous spending once, once more. Um, I, I really don't know what to say. I, I, it, what's really unfortunate to me, uh, what, what's really unfortunate is that now where do we go from here? Because the individuals that are bankrolling this uh, transition into quasi-communism and socialism is the American taxpayer. Okay, and it doesn't matter what you do for a living. I don't care if you're, uh, you know, working at McDonald's, cleaning enema bags for a living, or you're the asshole that has to clean the, uh, uh, you know, the adult movie theater at, at the Triple X store. All right. I don't care what you are, as long as you're getting paid to do it. And if you're getting paid to do it, that means you're getting taxed. And if you're getting taxed, that means you are financing this ridiculous experiment that we are currently finding ourselves in in America. You are the one bankrolling these dirty dishrag whores who find it 
okay and, and, and completely uh, nonchalant about shitting out five or six kids from five or six different fathers, even though they know they can't take care of them, even though they know they don't have the means to maintain sustenance for those children, they still shit out these children like they're going out of style, like they're a damn cabbage patch kid. And we're supposed to just, oh, uh, we're supposed to just be okay with it and, and, and continue to be uh, slaves to these ridiculous losers of our society. And that's what the American taxpayer is. That's what the American taxpayer is in America today. They are a slave to the morons. They're a slave to the losers. And let me tell you something, folks. I, I, I'm sick and tired of you know standing in line at the grocery store and seeing some dirty dish rag whore single mother pull out a food card and actually pay for all her little uh, steaks and you know, all the junk food that you know these supposed liberals are trying to. Uh, you know, supposedly curb us from eating, and yet they're giving these entitlements to these dirty, dishrag, disgusting, despicable, loose, loosey whore bags who shit out children like they're, you know, manufacturing a damn teddy bear out here. Uh, they give them all kinds of money in these food cards and housing voucher programs, and it's our money, damn it, it's our money. I mean, doesn't that make you sick? I mean, of course, if you're not working, I mean, you don't care. You're, you're sitting on your fat ass watching Maury Povich all day. You know, you're, you're shoveling bonbons down your gullet like a goddamn garbage disposal. You don't give a rat's ass about the American taxpayer. But I give a crap about the American taxpayer. I care about not only the American taxpayer, but the civility of this country. And like I've said, folks, there is an impending American loser revolution upon us. These episodes and acts of violence that were perpetrated by these losers, and I'm talking about that stupid, dirty whore out there in Alabama, or University of Alabama, this stupid bureaucratic bimbo that decided, oh, I lost my job, I can't get tenure. You're not going to give me tenure? I'm going to shoot up the joint because it's not fair. It's not fair that I don't get tenure. I've got so many bills to pay. I've, I've got so many dri I need tenure. I'm going to shoot your asses. I'm going to shoot you all to hell. I mean, this stupid, dirty idiot, uh, you know, a, a bimbo, I don't even know what her name was, this, this loser decided to go ape crap out there at University of Alabama because she didn't get tenure. Because she didn't get tenure. I mean, isn't that a typical bureaucratic move there? Isn't that typical of these damn criminalistic communists? Oh, if you don't give me my bureaucratic power, I will take power. I will take power, like Stalin. Oh, Stalin, we will take power. I mean, give me a damn break. And let me tell you, that was a loser act of violence right there. That was a loser act of violence, this dumb bimbo out there that shot up the joint at the University of Alabama. That was a disgusting, despicable act of loser violence. All right? I mean, it's because she didn't get tenure as a professor there, huh? I, I guess she was an adjunct professor, and she's like, I deserve tenure, all right? I talk about Karl Marx and Che Guevara all day long. I deserve tenure. And some bureaucrats out there obviously thought, or obviously knew that she was a kook and said, no, we can't give this stupid idiot tenure. And lo and behold, she you know, went out and shot up the place. I don't know how many people were dead. It was disgusting. And then another random act of loser violence happened right near my home, uh, mind you, right over here in Austin, Texas, uh, northwest side of Austin, Texas, out here, we had a moron, this Joe Stack asshole, all right, the, the, this moron who left a suicide note calling for communist revolution, and, he, and, and you know what's funny about this whole scenario, and I said it in the last program, how in the blue hell can you call for a communist revolution and claim that you know, life isn't fair when you have access to your own private plane, you asshole? I mean, can somebody explain that to me? How can somebody call for a communist revolution and have access to a damn personal private airplane? I mean, it, it just goes to show you the hypocrisy, and, and there's no uh, you know, rational thinking behind what this man did, folks. What is, I'll tell you what the rational thinking of what Joe Stack did, all right? It's, 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 it's loser rebellion. 
That's what it is. It's loser rebellion. You know, whatever this moron decided to do for the IRS to, you know, basically audit him and uh, obviously found some indiscretions in his bookkeeping, uh, you know, this idiot decided, oh, if I can't have my plane and I can't have my house, no one can. Yeah, because the idiot did burn down his house right before he crashed his stupid plane into the IRS building in hopes of causing some sort of communist revolution. And that's exactly what you know he alluded to in his damn suicide note. And then you got this dumb idiot's daughter. All right, I mean I don't know if you've heard about this Joe Stack's daughter. She's now living in Norway or some crap. And let me tell you something: she should keep her stupid ass out there in Norway because if she stepped foot in this country, she she should get her nose broken, in my personal opinion. All right, because this bimbo had the audacity to sit here and say, "Oh, my dad's a hero." He's a hero for standing up for the government. That's what he is. He's a, he's a hero. He's a hero for promoting communist revolution when this idiot had his own private plane. Can somebody explain how someone who is promoting an idealism that is supposed to be helping humanity in the uh, based upon its need, right? Based upon their need. And this idiot has a plane just, you know, hopping around somewhere in a, in a, in a hangar. I mean, can somebody, can, can somebody uh, explain to me what in the hell this is about? How this moron can sit here and call for a communist revolution? And, and have, he has a plane. He has a damn private plane in his damn garage somewhere, some hangar somewhere. I mean, the hypocrisy, folks, that's why I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with communism, it has nothing to do with socialism, it has a lot to do with sour grapes. It has a lot to do with individuals that realize that they're no longer going to be, you know, big ballers, you know, they're never going to be the big star that they imagined in their mind when uh, uh, liberal and feminist Hollywood suggested it to their conscience. They're never going to be the big uh, uh, movie star, they're never ever going to be... The, uh, the the big rich man or the big rich woman. And the reason is is because of their own irresponsible fiscal responsibilities. All right? uh, because they decided to put their names on, on dotted lines on financial instruments that they couldn't pay for. Uh, now that they know that they have debts that honest people couldn't pay, now that they realize that you know, that they can no longer achieve that ridiculous idea that was in their heads suggested to them by stupid-ass entertainment industry, uh, because they ruined their families to attain this idea, because of all this nonsense, now that they don't have their material, now that all the finance garbage is being repossessed and taken back, these people can't take it. These people cannot take it, for heaven's sake. I mean, what the hell is going on here? These people have lost everything. These people are soulless. All right? These people are soulless, and that's exactly what I'm talking about when I'm, ta when I'm saying the pending loser revolution. I mean, look at these acts of violence based upon loserism. And I know that's not a word, but it should start being a word because that's exactly what these people are participating in. If I can't have my plane, if I can't have my house, no one can. And as a result, I'm going to go out there and start a, you know, a communist revolution. Give me a damn break. It makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach. I mean, this is the American loser revolution, folks. I hope you're happy with it. I mean, what the hell are you going to do about it? Are you a damn taxpayer? I mean, are you an individual that actually works? I know there's not many of you out there in America anymore. I know most of you ass clowns are collecting, you know, whatever government entitle, entitlement you could sink your lazy ass teeth into. But me as a taxpayer and other and, and speaking for other taxpayers, we really don't appreciate it. We really don't appreciate it. And you know, for you folks that want to look back in the archive at blogtalkradio.com/ghost, take a look back in the archive. I actually have these losers calling me up saying, "Yeah, ghost, keep paying your taxes." Yeah, you keep telling them conservatives to, to pay their taxes, baby. I got five kids that you're feeding, baby. Keep paying your taxes. I'm going to have another kid. And that's what they got. You know, this is the America. This is the America that we have uh, somehow arrived into. Oh, I just don't know what else to say, folks. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I, I'm sincerely scared for, ever, for for our way of life. Our way of life may be in jeopardy because of these losers. 
because these losers dis- decided that you know they ruined themselves and they don't want to start over. You see, that's the thing about America. Just because they're losers doesn't mean they have to stay losers. It doesn't mean they have to stay there. This isn't a freaking monarchy, all right? This isn't some uh, you know a communist uh, you know uh, a Russian Soviet experiment here, all right? I mean, this is the or it used to be the land of opportunity until this liberal regime took power. And if you happen to have lost the game, if you happen to get in over your head, if you happen to have done, done some financial irresponsible things, well, you've got to go back to start, you assholes. You've got to go back to start, but these idiots don't want to go back to freaking start. They don't want to go back to start, folks. They don't want to say, you know what, I, all right, all right, let me tell you, I, I, I screwed up, all right? I made some fiscally irresponsible choices, all right? I, 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 I decided to take out a loan. Uh, you know, for $250,000 on a goddamn home for $25,000 a year of my income, and it, it just, I lost, okay? Now, why can't I just start over, all right, cut back on all the amenities that I buy myself, all the coffee lattes at Starbucks and, and the iPhones and the iPads and all this other technological crap, all the damn plasma screen TVs? Why don't we just take a step back from that and, uh, you know, try to rebound? How about that? Why don't we try to rebound from, you know, being put in this loser category? But you see, folks, nobody wants to rebound. Everybody just wants their hand out. They just want to sit on their fat jelly asses and shovel food down their gullet like a damn garbage disposal, watch Maury Povich, watch Jerry Springer. You know, that, that's all these idiots want to do. They want to, you know, and, and I'm, I'm talking about all you idiots that are out here, oh, I'm disabled. I'm disabled because I've got fibromyalgia. Yeah. Yeah, you know there's assholes actually collecting about 1500 a month on uh, because they got fibromyalgia, this, stu- this stupid new idea, you know, created by the damn pharmaceutical industry that oh, uh, you know, do you have like overactive nerves in your your your, your, your arms and your legs that make it painful to move? Oh, well, it's fibromyalgia. Uh, it's fibromyalgia. Yeah, fibromyalgia up your ass, all right? Get a job, you losers. 646-652-4869. We're going to take some callers here. 845, you're on the air. All right, listen. It's not that people don't want to go back to start. It's that some, the government's holding them back. It's the IRS stopping them from going to start. What are you talking about the IRS is stopping them? There's nobody stopping the IRS them. Is, it, legal loopholes and all that, it makes it so hard for everyone, and that's why that guy was a hero. What 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 exact tax loopholes are you speaking of, son? There's too many to even start naming. Well, tell you, me what exact... What, okay, okay, hold on. Talk to, talk to one of the people you call losers. You all right, well, sure. let, me, let, let me... I'm trying Everyone's to talk to you. got their own story. Okay, I understand. Let me talk to you for a second. Now, are you finding it difficult to succeed in America? Is that why you're upset? Is that why you're uh, suggesting that Joe head. Stack this is, is this a hero? This is me. I'm not. A, I'm not a loser. I'm. A, I would say I'm on your on your tier, but I know a lot of people that you would call losers, and let me tell you, they're not losers. No, I disagree with you, because look, uh, sir, th- this is not Africa, where you know we are destined to Africa, be. Of course, you got to bring race into it. No, there's nothing. Uh, I'm not. There's nothing racist about it. I have brought up Africa many be times because those be, because those people are in in desolate situations. I mean, they have governments that are withholding food and using it as a weapon for dictatorship, all right? And there's nowhere for them to go. It's not like Haiti, where they got a whole damn ocean of fish surrounding them, but yet they eat mud cakes because, well, you know, you, you take your own they interpretation for that. What? You, yeah, you eat mud cakes. And, 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 and lo and behold, you, you know, because you're unsuccessful, because you can't be the big baller like Lil Flip and, you know, Birdman, you want to turn to communism and you want to give people like Joe Stack credit for, uh, you know, doing a terrorist act. I mean, it's disgusting. Listen, the IRS is broken. The IRS isn't that far away from those African countries. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean you hate black people. Mudkips are great. Rick Roll. Oh, give me a break. Uh, do, do, do you hear this? Do, do you hear this right here? This is what I'm talking about. Here's, here's another one of these, uh, you know, little leftist ass clowns that are attempting to agitate my show so that they can win some kind of brownie points with, you know, the little leftist circles that they, you know, intermingle with on the Internet. 
It's a disgrace, folks. But you see, I would not doubt that these people actually believe that this stupid Joe Stack asshole is some sort of a damn patriot, that he's some sort of a damn, uh, you know, martyr, hero. And let me tell you, this Joe Stack is a piece of crap. I'm telling you, you know, as soon as he's buried, I'm going to find out where he's buried. I, I want to go take a dirty, yellow, bubbly piss on his gravesite. And I think that any true American taxpayer should do the same damn thing. I mean, I'm sick and tired of these assholes getting pissed off because, oh, you took away my house. Oh, you took away my this. You took away that. You shut your ass. You just shut your ass, all right? You know, you, you, you idiots need to understand that just because you can, you know, uh, live in your lavish lives that wasn't even yours to begin with, it was loaned to you through financial instruments, all right? Uh, you want to rebel against, uh, you know, everything. You want to rebel against the rich. You want to rebel against the people that are well off. You want to rebel against the government. You want to rebel against the IRS. I mean, it's, it's a disgrace. Utter disgrace. 601, you're on the air. Hey, Ghost, how you doing tonight? What's going on? Hi, nice to talk to you again, man. Um, I had two questions tonight. The first one, um, I haven't seen any comments about it in the media. I don't believe they'll say it. Uh, do you believe what Joe Stax did uh, would be considered terrorism? I've said it was terrorism. I said that we're going to see a lot more random acts of violence from these losers. And let me tell you, they're going to jeopardize our way of life. They're going to jeopardize our national security. I think the biggest threat to America's national security right now are leftist assholes who are going to decide to uh, do these disgusting, despicable random acts of violence because they're, you know, they're idiots. And they lost their materials because they didn't sign, look at what they were signing. They, they're losers at life, and lo and behold... Uh, you know, they want to go out and commit all these atrocities. It's disgusting. Uh, I, I kind of agree with you there. I mean, it's, like I said, in the media, they're not they're not calling it terrorism. I just, I don't understand why. I don't know if, even Fox isn't calling it terrorism. Well, I'll tell uh, you why I, they're not calling it terrorism, because, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, if, if we start calling those types of things terrorism on the public media front, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we're going to have to expand our national security measures, all right? And uh, I don't know if you folks know this. I wasn't going to put this as a subject matter of my show, but uh, they have extended, at least in the Senate, the uh, Patriot Act, the Unconstitutional Patriot Act. Uh, you know, they've extended it for one more year, at least in the Senate, and, uh, and they've added a few more provisions into that uh, uh, little uh, extension of the Patriot Act, and I think that everybody should uh, everybody should read it. Uh, but I want to thank you for your calls, uh, sir, because I, I do agree with you. They, they're not calling Joe Stack uh, a terrorist. Uh, they're not calling that uh, ridiculous, non-tenured bimbo a terrorist. They're not calling any of this terrorism. Uh, and you know, want to know why? Because they don't want to spawn what is bound to happen. And let me tell you, I don't want things to happen. I don't want, uh, you know, these barbarians, you know, the, these berserkers. I mean, that's what you can compare these losers in America to. They're absolute berserkers. Uh, I, I don't really care what happens to these people, but there's just too many of them. You understand there's just too many losers in this country for us to uh, somehow remedy this problem in America. There's too many of them. There's too many people with debts they can't pay for. There's too many people with children they can't afford. There's too many people out here that have done irresponsible things within their life that they just don't want to be held accountable for. They don't want to be responsible for. And as a result, because they realize that they're no longer going to be the big stars or they're not, no longer going to get the big riches, they don't want anybody else to have it. They want to take away the opportunity from everybody else, and that's why you've got you know, all this communist and socialist fervor happening in America today, because these ass clowns want to take the opportunity that America used to give to all of us, and they want to take it away because they were fiscally irresponsible. Well, screw you, losers, all right? Screw you, losers, and you can continue you know, throwing your stupid little acts of violence around. But let me tell you, I think that the taxpayer, the American taxpayer, the true American individuals out here who understand that uh, what made our country so great was the protection of our private property. All right? Without the protection of our private property, America is nothing. All right? America is nothing without the protection of private property. And let me tell you, there's becoming so many losers in this society. So many losers that our private property is in jeopardy. 
our private property is in jeopardy because if these idiots that are losers in America, if they're not going to commit these random acts of domestic uh, terrorism, they're going to be at your house. They're going to be pillaging your home and your materials and your family. That's what these people are going to do. They're going to be at your house. And let me tell you, I have said this, and I will, I'm going to continue to say this. If you care about this country and if you care about your own security, you need to stop worrying about, oh, the government needs to do this and the government needs to do that. You, know, you, you need to stop doing that and you need to start arming yourself. I strongly advise every true conservative and every taxpaying American citizen and everybody who, you know, covets goods that is envied by all, I strongly advise you folks to arm yourself with the fullest capacity of firearms available. And what I strongly advise people to do is if you find somebody infringing upon your private property, if you find somebody breaking into your home, if you find somebody breaking into your car, if you, if you find somebody sitting here attempting to infringe upon your, your private property, uh, you are within your constitutionally protected right to blow this idiot away. All right? Bottom line. I mean, where's Charlie Bronson when you need him, for heaven's sake? You know, where the hell is Charlie Bronson out here, you know, Death Wish style? Where, where are these idiots at? You know, these leftists have been able to, you know, shit out these, you know, uh, you know, borderline suicide Islamic bomber type idiots for the sake of their cause, this leftist idealism. Where the hell is the damn Charlie Bronsons out here to put these damn losers in their place? I mean, do you understand? I mean, I, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick of losers. I'm, t I'm, I'm tired of them. All right? I'm sick and tired of these losers. I mean, it makes me want to puke. It makes me want to throw up nasty chicken grease and corn oil and cream of wheat with five-day-old cereal and stomach plasma. It makes me sick. And what's really unfortunate is that nobody else is sick out here. Everybody thinks it's a big freaking joke. Everybody thinks it's a big freaking joke. So I'm telling you, folks, if, if you need protection, if you need to protect your private property, by all means, go out there and, and, and don't have any sympathy to these morons. If you see somebody breaking into somebody's house, as a matter of fact, I strongly advise you, if you're a property owner, if you actually still you know, are paying on your mortgage, uh, you know, get around together with all the individuals that are in your neighborhood and have an understanding that you have consent. And make sure you have this in writing, folks, all right? You know, make sure you have this in writing, that everybody in the neighborhood is in consent with, uh, you know, any kind of disciplinary force that's necessary to halt uh, anyone attempting to steal private property from their neighborhood. And I'm telling you this right now. There was a, there was a gentleman by the name of Horton, uh, a gentleman by the name of Horton out here in Texas who decided to do just that. Uh, and, and for you folks that aren't aware of that particular case, we talked about it when it was, uh, when it was around about four, three or four years ago. This individual decided to call the police because he saw somebody breaking into his neighbor's home and because the you know 911 operator was telling them that well it's going to take a couple of minutes for the cops to get out there, Horton was saying, hey I can't wait five ten minutes these idiots are going to get away. And you know of course the the damn operator was like, well I, I don't know what to tell you just just wait for the cops just wait for them to get there. And Horton decided to take it upon himself to get and practice his constitutionally second amendment of uh, constitutionally protected second amendment right and decided to shoot the two sons of bitches, all right? They decided, they decided to just gun these idiot losers down that were breaking into his neighbor's home, all right? And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Horton did not get prosecuted. I mean, he got it, 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 the prosecution attempted because, of course, these liberals, they want to make a big deal, like, oh, don't do that. It, oh, no. But he killed those two sons of bitches, and, and rightfully so. You know, I mean, you know, cheers to Horton. We need more people like this. Do you understand? We need more individuals that are going to protect their private property because I'm telling you right now, these individuals in this loser and this pending loser revolution, they are serious as a heart attack. I mean, look at how inspired this moron Joe Stack was to kill himself. I mean, this, this idiot did the equivalent of what the suicide bombers are doing 
uh, in the Islamic uh, communities. That, that, that's what they're the equivalent to, and they're doing it for the sake of communism. They're doing it for the sake of, oh, if I can't have my material, no one can. Give me a break. 646-652-4869. We're going to take a few callers, then we're going to move on to another subject matter. Uh, 785, you're on the air. This is your mother speaking. Yeah, shut your stupid mouth. Just sit over there. Shut your hole! Stupid piece of crap. 601, you're on the air. Hey, Ghost, I'm sorry. I had a second question earlier, but I've forgotten what it was. I'll call back in. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, man, you completely caught me off guard. I was waiting. Um, yeah, you completely caught me off guard, man. I'm sorry. No, uh, no, don't worry about it, man. Uh, I'll get back to you in a few. As a matter of uh, fact, this is a, this, is a, this is a perfect opportunity to uh, you know segue into the next subject matter that I want to speak of. And I actually want to talk about the uh, political theater that the Congress showed on, you know, television berating this poor Jap, uh, you know, the Toyota president of the, uh, of the company of Toyota. Uh, you know, these stupid, dumbass liberals, you know, they, they were out here grilling this damn Jap, and if you didn't get to see it, I strongly advise you folks to, you know, go on C-SPAN and go check it out for yourself. It, it's a hoot. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how all of a sudden these Democrats and these liberals – I want to act like they give two rats asses about the consumer, as like they give two rats asses about, you know, oh, I care about the American people. Where's your compassion, Toyota? Where's your compassion? And to be completely honest with you, uh, Toyota is the one of the only uh, people that are actually employing people that didn't, uh, you know, collect the stimulus package money. Yeah, I mean, do you understand that, uh, okay, so Toyota, you know, uh, screwed up on a manufacturing situation with the car, okay? Uh, sorry. All right, I'm sure that they're going to settle uh, with those individuals generously. But to compare Toyota as some big bad monster that's some nefarious company that supposedly, I don't know, put profits before safety is just ridiculous. It's just unbelievably stupid. I mean, we have had American car companies, and I hate to say this because I'm an American, all right? But we've had American car companies legitimately, and this has been proven, they have brought in accountant bean counters to do the numbers, crunch the numbers on whether or not they should recall one of their many cars uh, you know, for their many defects back or whether they should just leave the car out even though it jeopardized the lives of, you know, who knows, thousands of people, millions of people, who cares? It's cheaper to actually just leave the car out there than to bring it back in. Some bean counter, and, and you can look this up for yourself, folks. I'm not going to name the company that did it, but these were American car companies. And these individuals decided to, you know, settle out of court with individuals that they knowingly, they knowingly knew they had a fault in because they didn't want to recall the uh, uh, the particular vehicle in question that needed the recall. So, I mean, you know, you've got these liberals in Congress just grilling. I mean, they are grilling Toyota out here. And Toyota, of course, you know, what the hell can he do? He's just like, I am sorry. Konnichiwa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And, you know, I feel sorry for Toyota, all right? I feel sorry for the bastard, because here he is. He understands that he's trying to be, uh, he's trying to be a big-time uh, automaker, all right? And I'm not hating on Toyota. As a matter of fact, I, I think Toyota's doing uh, probably a more patriotic economics uh, uh, strategy than American companies here in America, all right? I mean, do you understand that Toyota has invested in our country? I mean, this is a foreign Japanese entity. They have invested in several plants in our country. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, the, the Tundra, I believe, or the Tacoma, one of those stupid trucks, they're made in that pissing ground uh, down south down here in Texas in San Antonio. I mean, they got plants in California. They got a, another plant in the East Coast. They got car plants everywhere. They are employing American people. And why are they doing something like that? Well, because they know that America is their biggest consumer. So what I am saying is that, you know, the Democrats are real 
you know, I don't know what the hair is up their ass to sit here and try to do this political theater. I, I guess they're trying to gain emotional substance or political capital with the American public. Uh, but let's be frank. I think that Toyota was overly, overly protective when it comes to all these recalls. All right. I mean, you know, I think they were overly protective. Okay, yeah, they had to recall the uh, uh, the, the foot pedal garbage. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, we need a foot pedal. The foot pedal is wrong at the high on the So the the foot pedal was wrong. They recalled it, and because they wanted to keep their integrity as one of the safest car companies in the world, they decided to call other cars back, based upon uh, you know small, I mean, barely noticeable imperfections within the manufacturing. I mean, they're being overly protective here, and I'm not trying, and and I hate to say it, that I'm actually talking and speaking for a damn foreign company, but uh, good Lord, folks, uh, you know, Toyota is paying American salary somewhere. I mean, they are playing the free market capitalist game. I mean, you understand, they didn't take any of this bailout money like all these dumb American companies. Maybe that's why these liberals are trying to use Toyota for political capital, uh, because he's still playing by the old free market capitalist game, and these damn uh, bureaucrats, these damn liberals out here, uh, you know, th- these morons are still playing by, you know, they, they want to play by this Marxist, uh, Leninist, Maoist idea. You know, where the government takes over the means of production. And they have, folks. I mean, the government owns uh, a lot of the uh, automobile industries right now because, well, you know, who the hell knows? Some bureaucrat out there in Washington said that, you know, we needed to do it. And they're still, you know, closing down plants. I mean, the, these American companies are still, you know, reneging on uh, uh on these damn uh, pension funds and all this other crap. So, I mean, uh, w- w- so what gives you, morons? I just think everybody, look, I, I agree that, you know, the Toyota foot pedal situation, it was a tragedy. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, uh, but, you know, of course, we have j- uh, judicial channels where we can deal with that sort of thing. Okay, uh, to sit here and bash Toyota as if they're the great Satan is disgusting. I mean, if I were Toyota, the the type of tongue lashing that Toyota took from these stupid bureaucrats in Washington, if I were him, I would take the, the, the plants that I have here in the United States and get them the hell out of here. I'd say, oh yeah, motherfucker, you want to, you want to go against a Toyota? You want to go against a Toyota? I'll take my plant and take it out of here. i take it out of here and then i stick Ginsu knife up your asshole, motherfucker. Yeah, that, that's what I would do. You know, that's exactly what I would do if I were Toyota. It's ridiculous crap. And there's a, a well, I hear a helicopter in the in the sky here by my house. What the hell, the ghetto bird coming over here? I mean, this is America. Are you hearing this? Listen to this. I mean, does everybody hear this chopper in the air? There's a damn ghetto bird out here in my neighborhood. For heaven's sake, I live in a great neighborhood. I live in a great neighborhood, for heaven's sake. I got the goddamn ghetto bird. And for you folks that aren't familiar with the ghetto bird, it is urban vernacular for the uh, helicopter, uh, the police helicopter in the sky that has a little, you know, spotlight on it. But the damn ghetto bird is in my neighborhood, folks. And let me tell you, I don't live in some cheap-ass piece of crap neighborhood. But this is just go. This just goes to show you how ridiculous our society is getting. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take some calls here. What do you think about Toyota? Huh? You think I'm? You, you, I mean, I've got people in the chat room saying, "Oh, look at him! He's taking up for a foreign takeover of America." Well, you want to know why I'm embracing Toyota? Because they're providing jobs in America. I mean, do you, do you see American companies providing jobs? No, they're taking them out of the country. They're sending them to China. They're sending them to India. They're sending them to South America. And these are American companies that are still trying to boast themselves as, oh, yeah, we're an American company. That's what we are. We're an American company, asshole. Give me a break. I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Let's go ahead and take some calls here. Uh, uh, let, let, let's, just, let, let's just try a 111 number and see what the hell that's about. 111, you're on the air. Hello, you there? Hello? How's it going? Uh, not too bad. Uh, I want to say I drive a Toyota, and I'm just wondering, how far down your throat can you get a big nigger dick? Ah, uh, stupid ass clown. You see, here we go again, folks. 
All right, liberal agitation. You know, they're sitting here trying to deviate your mind from the subject matter at hand, and the subject matter at hand is the pending loser revolution. This is why these individuals sit here and attempt to, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, throw racial slurs around and try to provide in disgusting, despicable discourse, because inevitably they want to attempt to try to take my show off the air. You know, this is what these liberals like to do. They'll, they'll sit there and be the ones who agitate racial slurs on your show, and they'll call up the authority and say, Oh, look, he's, he's a racist. Take him off the air now. <laughs> anyway, 901, you're on the air. Hello there. I... Yeah, stupid morons. I mean, uh, do, do you idiots have a life? I mean, are you hearing this, folks? Our country is on the on the verge of a potential uh, loser revolution, and you've got ass clowns sitting over here thinking that they're, uh, I, I don't know, Howard Stern or something, you know, playing sound effects, uh, you know, uh, they're making fart noises with their ass. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but they need to just stop what the hell they're doing and take life serious for a second. All right? Take life serious for just one second. This country is on a path to disaster. And the reason why it's on a path of disaster is because of your nonchalant attitude by you thinking it's a big freaking game out here. And let me tell you something, folks. If, if this – I don't want it to happen. I do not want a revolution in America to happen. I don't want it. I want order. You understand? I want rule of law, and I want rule of law obeyed in the judicial process. I don't believe in this – a uh, complete blasphemy against contract law in America that's happening in today's country. I mean, these leftists are nullifying contract law, and that's basically what creates our private property, you morons. I mean, it's just, it's a disgrace. It's an utter disgrace, and I can't believe none of you morons can sit here and actually wake your fat jelly asses up, all right? Put the freaking fork down for about five freaking minutes so you can understand that you have an obligation. You understand? You have an obligation politically, economically, and socially, and you morons have failed that obligation. Let me repeat that again. You have failed that obligation. And it makes me sick. Anyway. Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call here. We're going to take some more callers. Uh, hopefully, we have some uh, insight from some people. Uh, nine four nine, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Just uh, just listening in. What's going on? Do you have something? You have something to to, to put forth here, or you just playing yeah, with your Peter um, Popper? Oh, you, uh, I remember you. You had a rap way back when. And uh, I heard I heard you um I heard that wasn't right. I heard you wrote it and it wasn't live. Why? What are you talking about rap? Are you talking about that time that I was uh uh sitting out there busting a flow for uh, for peeps out here? Yeah. That I wrote a a a flow? Are you kidding me? I mean, I I can rhyme off the head, son. Do you understand that I can rhyme off the head? The last time I uh did a little stupid rap song for you idiots in hopes of sparking synapses in you morons. Uh, you know, I made rap look easier than, you know, kicking a damn can down the street. You know, I made rap music look like, you know, uh, taking a crap. You know, I mean, you know, everybody who's taking a dirty diarrhea shit, well, that's what rap is. That's what I made rap look like when I busted a flow. So, you know, no, it wasn't written down. No, I didn't. I didn't sit here and, you know, take time out of my life to write a stupid rhyme. All right, so I don't even know why I'm even defending my rap credentials to these morons. Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Uh, Let's go ahead, since nobody gives a crap about the Toyota situation, I just did want to highlight that the Congress is utilizing this whole Toyota situation as political fodder and political capital in hopes of gaining some sort of emotional credibility with you people out here in the American community. You know? I'm serious. That's exactly what you uh, what, what they're attempting to do by grilling old Toyota over here. And let me tell you something, Toyota, if you're listening to me, if you are listening to me, Toyota, I'm an American, all right? I'm a true conservative. 
But since you people uh, are playing by the capitalist game, I feel for you, Toyota. I feel for you because this communist government of ours is attempting to stop you from your potential uh, progress in our country. And the reason why they're, you know, in my personal opinion, they're putting so much bureaucratic red tape and having you come to Congress and, and blasting you in the media, Toyota, is because they want their investment. Yeah, that's right. Their investment that they invested in the American car companies to prosper so that they can show the American minions out here that, oh, you see, look, we took over the car industry, and it's better now. It's better because we took it over. All right, the government, the, the government, this, this is for the proletariat. I mean, this, this is why, folks, this is why, in my personal opinion, they are giving Toyota so much crap, these damn liberals. And you can look back on the tape, look back on C-SPAN, look back at the testimony that, you know, poor, poor Toyota, you know, he, he looks like he, he just rolled out of a bad bottle of sake, you know. Uh, you know, he's out there saying, I am sorry, I got Ginsu knife up your asshole. And, you know, he's out here trying to, you know, kiss these damn congressmen's ass, and they're, and they're using him for political capital. I think it's a disgrace. And this man is providing American jobs in this country. He's providing American jobs in this damn country, for heaven's sake. And I don't understand why, you know, anyone can't see what these damn liberals are doing. All right, what they're doing by putting the heat on Toyota is nothing more than trying to make their investment, which is the American automobile industry, because remember, our tax dollars went to that stupid industry. They're trying to make it work, because if they make it work and you know, if they increase the sales of any of these damn American car companies, it means that their little stupid little quasi-socialist, quasi-communist experiment worked. Ass clowns. Can't believe you people. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. We're going to move on to the next subject matter. And the next subject matter is the Senate and what they told NASA. And let me tell you, I, I for you folks that have been keeping up to, with the show and uh, are big fans of the show, you know I hate NASA. I hate NASA. I mean, you don't even understand how much I hate NASA because all of the trillions – well, and that's with a T, trillions of dollars that have been wasted on nothing, on absolutely nothing. Well, the Senate, I don't know how much this, I don't know how much anybody can really read into this because it's up to NASA on whether or not they're going to innovate and take us uh, places out of this planet. But the Senate finally told NASA that you either need to put up or shut up, all right? Take us somewhere relevant, you morons. All right, I mean, NASA has done nothing, and that's what I've been saying all along. And under Obama's new little plan, you know, one of the many plans that he still has, uh, he wants to, you know, send another man to the moon, uh, you know, who the hell knows why. I mean, I thought we were already there. I thought we'd been there or something, but, you know, it depends on who you believe. Uh, and the Senate is like, hey, wait a minute, you know, we want a little bit more bang for our buck. We've spent trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars, and you four-eyed, freckle-faced, red-headed, beaten, stepchildren bookworms have yet, have yet to put out anything of any kind of substance, anything to progress mankind as a civilization out of this planet. You've done nothing. Okay, you've given us a couple of rock fragments from Mars and a couple of rock fragments from the, the moon. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. Trillions of dollars on, in those stupid, dumb uh, you know, rocks that were picked up by these dumbass little stupid robots we send to space. Great. Thanks a lot, NASA. I tell you, I hate these NASA bookworms. They're disgusting. I, I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them. They've done nothing for our country. They, they've done nothing but spent our tax dollars. Trillions of dollars of it, too, man. I mean, give me a damn break. Screw you, bookworms, or I don't care about you people. I mean, if we're going to allow space travel, if we are going to conduct a research development into space travel, we should do it in the private sector. We shouldn't be funding this out of our taxpaying dollars. You know, we shouldn't be just giving these bookworms a reason just to sit on their fat asses and eat Twinkies all day and, you know, look in telescopes. You understand? I mean, we, if we are going to sit here and give these idiots trillions of dollars, the least we could do is slap these morons in the face and make their freckles move and make them understand that, hey, you have to do something, all right? 
fruity ass bastards. Anyway, six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call. You are listening to the second hour of True Conservative Radio. Of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in live with me. Uh, if you're one of these individuals who is uh, listening to me through podcast or through the archive, and you want to figure out when I'm conducting these live broadcasts, so you can come kick back with us here in the chat room. And we have a whole bunch of people in the chat room. The thing you need to do is follow me on Twitter. That's right. Follow me on Twitter, and the, the Twitter name to follow is Ghost Politics. All right? All one word, no underscores. Ghost Politics is the Twitter name to follow. And since we're going ahead and uh, throwing plugs here, I'm going to go ahead and plug the True Conservative blog. And, of course, the True Conservative blog is ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. Once again, folks, I appreciate your insight. I'd like for you all, if you could please, when you read the blog, please comment. And, uh, of course, you're going to see a lot of foul foul mouth garbage and a bunch of profanity, uh, racial slurs in the comments. Uh, These are nothing but liberal and uh, feminist and communist agitators uh, attempting to uh, deviate the ideas being put forth there on the blog into these disgusting, ridiculous, mindless ideas that they want your mind to go into. But don't let it happen. Don't let it happen because our country de- de- depends on it. All right? Our country depends on it. And, of course, folks, if you want to leave me a voice message, I do have a voicemail that everybody can have access to. All right? Uh, go to blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's the official website of the True Conservative Radio Program. Uh, go down to the bottom of the page where it says uh, it's, it's right by that Charles Schumer little video clip where I have him uh, quoted in the Senate saying that the American people don't care about pork barrel spending. Uh, That's the voicemail box. Uh, Click that link, and it'll give you all the necessary procedures to, you know, leave me a voicemail. All right? I I would love to to hear from you. We got a lot of ass clowns calling up, uh, acting like complete and utter jerk nuts. Uh, But I'd like to hear from you. And also, if you're too scared to leave your voice, by all means, give me a damn email. All right, give me a damn email. Ghostpolitics at yahoo.com is the email address. Ghostpolitics at yahoo.com, you ass clowns. Anyway, back to this NASA situation. Uh, can we please end the contract with this piece of crap uh, organization, NASA? I mean, we, we've been spending trillions upon trillions of dollars. Trillions. And what have they done? Oh, okay, they've gotten us a few rocks. They've gotten us some pictures of Mars, or supposedly Mars. I really don't believe anything. All right, I don't believe anything that NASA says to me whatsoever. I don't believe that we landed on the moon. All right, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Okay, I don't. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I don't believe it. I do not believe that we landed on the moon because you know why the hell haven't we gone back? Why is it such a big deal for us to go back there? I mean, do, do you understand that? Barack Obama is setting aside or attempting to set aside $6 billion to send us back to the moon and for more NASA funding. $6 billion, for heaven's sake. Why the hell do we need to go back? I thought we were already there. You know? I I thought we were already there, for heaven's sake. And I I just don't believe a word, anything that that comes out of NASA's mouth. Uh, They're stupid, dumb, idiot bookworms. They're typical scientists, the same scientists that you see uh, coming out with this fake global warming material. Uh, You know, know, once again, like I've said previous, don't believe anything just because some scientist said it. All right? Science has become an institution. All right? And let me tell you, and I've, I've said this many times, but it bears repeating. It's funny that science has become an institution that is the end all authority. I mean, it supersedes the authority of the government at times. And meanwhile, the idea of science, the people, the forefathers of science, Descartes, uh, you know, uh, the, the, all these individuals, Newton, uh, the forefathers of science, these individuals, they inquired about the ideas of science or the inquiry of the unknown, because that's what science was at the time. The reason they did this was to overthrow an institution that was uh, bearing down oppression upon them at the time. And that institution was the church. That's right. The Catholic Church was, you know, implementing a lot of oppression back in those days. 
and they understood that science could be the end all when it comes to contradicting this institution. And once that institution has been contradicted, well, then it can no longer be relevant. They can no longer oppress. They can no longer have justification for oppression. All right? But now science itself has become the same institution that Descartes and Newton, Galileo, and these forefathers of science were attempting to discredit. Science itself has become an institution. If you don't believe me, take a look at this global warming crap. All right? We nearly got ourselves into a global communist situation based upon this global warming malarkey. This COP15 crap, all right? This COP15 crap back in Copenhagen when they attempted to facilitate some sort of global communist endeavor based upon this fake global warming data, you know? And luckily, luckily, nothing happened at that little stupid event. It was just a a waste of everybody's time, effort, money, and energy, no pun intended. But this is what science has turned itself into here. So so I, I don't believe anything NASA says. All right, and if you know anybody from NASA, you tell them I said that, you know, go piss off. All right, I think that they're pieces of garbage. They're worthless. You tell them I said they're worthless. A monkey could do what you idiots do. And as a matter of fact, you sent the monkey to the moon. You sent the monkey into space, NASA. That's how stupid you people are. So anyway, 646-652-4869. We're going to take some more callers here. Uh, 562, you're on the air. Hey, um, I heard you um, drop the monkey thing. Um, actually, monkeys are our cousins, so why would you actually say that we're stupid for sending monkeys to space? Because uh, uh, actually... I'm sorry, are you, are you saying that monkeys are a person? No, um, I'm saying that they're our cousins, and they can probably they're, help they're, us. They're, they're your them. cousins? How, how old are you? How old are you? Seventeen. Seventeen? And uh-huh. uh, you go to you go to public education, public school. Yes. Yeah. Well, you see, this is what I'm talking about right here, folks. Public education, 17 years old, and this poor, dumb little girl actually believes that monkeys are our cousins. I mean, do you understand what 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 I'm t- talking about? The potential loser revolution. I mean, this is what these morons are saying. I mean, I'm not even making this up. I swear to God, I could not make this up. These idiots here actually believe that monkeys are our cousins. I'm sure that's being taught in public education. I'm sure that, uh, you know, they're being taught that Darwin, uh, Charles Darwin, was the Messiah. You know, that he was the, the, the coming of Christ or some crap. Unbelievable. But you heard it, folks. You heard it right here on the True Conservative Radio program. Unbelievable. And for that young lady, um, no, we didn't come from a freaking ape, all right? Maybe you and your family came from apes, but I didn't come from some stupid chimp, all right? We're not freaking monkeys. I mean, a monkey is a stupid, dumb, idiotic animal. It's a stupid animal that eats and shits bananas all day and masturbates every five seconds. I mean, a monkey is a, is a stupid, dumb, idiot animal. And it makes me sick that you morons out here, you atheist assholes, will sit here and try to shove it down these young people's throats that, oh, you're a monkey, you're an animal. That's another thing I don't like about children's television. Haven't you noticed that most of these characters for children's television are freaking animals? Haven't you noticed that? They're, they're freaking animals. I mean, they're basically telling us that we're animals, that we're, we're pieces of garbage, that we're nothing more than some primitive piece of animalistic crap. And you people are accepting it. That's the funny part about it. You're accepting it. You're like, eh, we're nothing but stupid, dumb, primitive, idiotic, animalistic heathens. That's what we are. We're we're, we're pathetic. Unbelievable. Anyway, I'm going to take a break here really really fast, folks. I'm going to take some more calls. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move into the song segment of the program. I feel that uh, it is necessary to continue to spread the message about different variety forms of music. Uh, I think we're losing our creative process, and I think to inspire the creative process, I'm going to feature uh, you know, some artists and some people, and if you happen to listen to them and you happen to like them, we'll go ahead and uh, take the proper procedures and download them legally. 
one of the songs I'm going to play here is definitely something that I feel is appropriate for the times that we are living in today. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of the lyrics that are being said in this, pro, uh, in this particular song, I actually uh, feel them personally. So I'm going to take this break. I want you to listen to it. Uh, and I'm going to say the artist and the name of the song right afterwards. And I'm sure once I turn it on, uh, you know, you people are probably going to know the song. So please, uh, it's not going to be that long. I'm going to take a quick break. Uh, you know, don't go off looking at any, uh, you know, dumbass Roman Polanski kitty porn. Uh, don't go out there looking at naked pictures of uh, Johnny Weir's asshole. Uh, don't do any of that fruity ass crap. Stay here with me. We're just taking a short break. All right, uh, of course, once again, follow me, Ghost Politics is the name on Twitter, and uh, you know, I, I guess let's just go ahead and take a break, all right, go ahead, uh, uh, can we get the music going on, please? song i'm telling you that's uh mad world by gary jewels uh and for you folks that appreciated that song i strongly advise you to go through the proper methods to obtain that song through legitimate means it's a very good song as a matter of fact it's definitely telling of the times uh sometimes you know to be perfectly candid with you folks i find it hard to wake up every morning you know I find it hard to wake up every morning and look at these, you know, disgusting, despicable scowls on everybody's face because, oh, I'm not going to be the next American Idol. And, oh, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, some big, rich bastard. It's unbelievable. So once again, folks, if you like that uh, particular song, Mad World is the name of the song. Gary Jules is the uh, individual who sang that particular version. So, uh, you know, once again, that's the credit to the song. Once again, folks, I'd like to hear from you. 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Uh, I want to hear from you. 
What do you have to say? We talked a little bit about NASA. We're going to move into the next subject matter here in a couple of seconds. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take a couple of callers here and see what the hell they have to say. Uh, 919, you're on the air. Hey, Ghost, I'm going to jump back to Toyota for a minute. All right. First of all, I'm glad that somebody besides me sees the whole American government invest in GM and all of a sudden what their number one competitor is being grilled in front of Congress. Hmm, coincidental. Massive recalls. You know, of course. Uh, reason. So, I mean, I'm, I can't believe nobody's seeing right through that. Well, of course they're not seeing right through it. What they're doing is uh, feeding into the mass media hysteria that they're pumping in their faces that, oh, you're going to die if you you know buy a Toyota car. And what's really unfortunate is that if you stop buying Toyotas, if you stop buying trucks from Toyota and cars, uh, you're, you're jeopardizing American jobs. I mean, they have literally three plants in this country uh, that are supplying American jobs. Uh, but, meanwhile, meanwhile, we've got our little uh, American companies that not only were – you know, bankrolled once again. Their debts were bankrolled off of our dime, but on top of which, uh, they now have the government as a partner to, like you said, squeeze any potential competition that's uh, uh, going to jeopardize their new uh, little socialist endeavor they have with the government. Correct. But here's here's where I disagree. You really think Toyota's creating more jobs than they have taken away over the past thirty years? You well, think, no, I mean, think... I mean, hey, look, that's the price of uh, free market uh, global economics. Uh, you know, what really killed the job market in the car industry in Detroit was the fact that it was unionized. And I understand unionization back when we didn't have any child labor laws, when we didn't have any kind of, uh, uh, you know, mi- maximum work week hours and, you know, all the other uh, you know, federally mandated type of uh, provisions that are required by certain companies. But at this point in time, I mean, there's no need for a union, and on top of which, the union uh, basically poked the eyes of the worker because inevitably what happened? The, they couldn't afford what they had uh, negotiated for. It was, you know, incomprehensible based upon the profits generated from the company for them to keep, uh, you know, paying these idiots uh, pensions until they're 95 and gas bags and, you know, uh, uh, taking peas out of, uh, you know, plastic bubbles and garbage like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's just disgusting what has happened to our country, and, and we've done it. We have done it to ourselves, in my view. But, you know, it would be very interesting to see what the wages of a Toyota non-union factory employee are compared to a GM unionized factory employee. Uh, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, you know, back in the 90s, I knew schmucks, uh, you know, that were working for these companies that were literally, you know, putting, a, you know, a couple of bolts in a, an assembly line somewhere, and these morons were getting $90,000 a year. I mean, how, how is a company supposed to, how is a company supposed to profit when they're paying menial, unskilled laborers who are nothing more than folks in an assembly line? How can they expect to get paid more than executives or teachers in America? I just don't understand what they do that is so important that you know it, it makes them deserve such a high rate of pay. And, and that's what really screwed up our employment situation when it came to production, in my view. But because they're better at manual labor, they should scrape by at twenty thousand dollars a year as opposed to sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year. Well, no, I mean, I don't think that the the uh, manual labor at Toyota is only getting a measly twenty thousand. I beg to differ with that, but um, I doubt they're getting paid ninety, as as I've suggested earlier. But the thing is, is that they're basing the wage based upon those competent workers that are available and willing to work. It's just the free market society. I mean, and, and what's really unfortunate, man, is that uh, you know these individuals are actually providing work. They're providing labor. They're actually producing products out of our country. Nobody's producing products anymore out of our country. Well, I mean, just a rough estimate. What do you think these Toyota employees are making? Twelve dollars an hour? Thirteen dollars? That's twenty to twenty-five thousand a year. I mean, that's that's nothing. That's, you can't raise a family on that. Well, then don't take the job. What it was being, but you know what? You can't take the GM job because Toyota ran them out of business. No, they they ran themselves out of business, sir. I mean, that's why the the the, the cars. First of all, it wasn't just the unions that ran themselves out of business. It was a big portion of it, but also the idiotic and incompetent executives that were there in office that decided to invest large amounts of the capital of the company into gas-guzzling uh, automobiles. 
But that was and what the demand was for. That was where the <laughs> demand was. Well, That's no, what that the American was pro- people wanted. That, that was projected demand. And you see, you know, unfortunately, it didn't really pan out for him, did it? I well, mean, we Hummer know, just we... Hummer just closed today. They just yeah, uh, I, I, I read on. about that. That uh, the Chinese firm that was attempting to buy him, it just fell through. Uh, look, I, I agree with you that uh, you know I wish that America uh, would you know wake up out of its uh, you know poor work ethic and its you know lackadaisical attitude and start realizing that uh, we as the American people have an obligation to conduct ourselves in a mature and you know uh, and a professional manner in the economic, political, and social aspects of our life. And what what's really unfortunate is that people just decided to I'm just going to show up to work. I'm not even going to think anymore. I'm just going to watch TV. I'm just going to be a body. I'm not even going to uh, attempt to spark synapses in my brain. I'm going to have a routine, and that's all there is to it. And they didn't want to think about politics. They didn't want to think about social implications. They didn't want to think about the economic implications. And now that we're in the situation that we're in, all of a sudden, you know, people have to think for a minute. And now, because they're so dumbed down and so idiotic and so pathetic, they can't think anymore. Now they've got their hands out, out to big brother government saying, please give me more money. Well, I mean, you know what, Ghost, I respectfully disagree with you, but what exactly are your credentials? Yeah, well, what my credentials are is, you know, somebody who's with the Chamber of Commerce in their local community, somebody who's actually providing employment in in Texas out here. That's my credentials, you stupid moron. And, and, and that's another thing. You know, that's another thing. All of a sudden, oh, you have to have a college degree, even though I do have one, but you have to have a college degree to be credible in America. I mean, I don't know if you idiots uh, read that Associated Press uh, report about that stupid, dumb idiot bimbo that's in debt $550,000, but hey, she's a doctor now, huh? She's a doctor. I mean, I I can give you countless morons that are putting themselves in hundreds of thousands of dollars in student debt, and they're coming out into a workforce that doesn't have a job for them. Now, it doesn't have a job for them. This is a service industry-based economy, and, 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 and we have a workforce that is saturated, completely saturated with college graduates. And what these idiots don't understand is that when they put that stupid financial loan, that obligation, that student aid loan on their books, when they put it on their name, there's no way of you know, going back on that loan. It's not like a house or a car, you ask clowns. You can't say, oh, I can't pay it no more, so here you go. No, you are obligated to that debt for the rest of your life. And I I strongly advise you folks to please uh, do YouTube search uh, for, you know, college graduates uh, that are having their pay docked by, uh, you know, these individuals who issued out these, uh, whatever, student loans, you know? It's a disgrace. I, I, if you want to go to college, folks, you better get that crap paid for a full scholarship. And if you don't have it paid full scholarship, then don't even bother going. And if you are going to go, go to your nearest community college. And don't go to these technical schools that are popping up out of nowhere. Oh, I'm getting career training. I'm getting career training. I'm learning how to change bedpans for a living for $8 an hour. Oh, yeah, Uh, I'm changing bedpans for $8 an hour, but I'm getting docked $17,000. I'm getting docked $17,000 out of my financial aid eligibility, okay? That's what I'm doing. I'm getting an $8 an hour job from some stupid career training school uh, so I can change bedpans for $8 an hour. Thanks, uh, technical school. And the reason I'm saying go to your damn community college, folks, because you can take two years of that and get a little bit more educated than you are now and actually obtain a skill or a trade, or if you want to pursue your future educational, higher educational endeavors, you can do so without it costing you a whole t- hell of a lot of money. You know, these trade schools, these, these, these IT key techs, these, these you know, Kaplan institutes, these dumb idiot technical institutions out here, these morons are charging people seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars, and let me tell you, a lot of these people aren't paying for it uh, because there's so much financial aid eligibility for losers in America. Uh, you know, it's run-of-the-mill loser. I mean, I posted a uh, an advertisement about one of these technical institutions on my blog, ghostpolitics.blogspot.com, 
and they actually advertised, folks, a, a woman who shitted out seven kids. I mean, that was the advertisement. So-and-so has seven kids, and she's a single mother, and because she attended our technical college, she is now on her way to being uh, somebody who's successful for tomorrow. I mean, do you think that this dishrag whore who shitted out these seven kids paid for that little technical institution stint? No. The American taxpayer paid for that. And let me tell you, all right? Let me tell you, these morons out here that are in this business of technical education, they are juicing. They are juicing the financial aid institute, uh, financial aid system. I mean, a, commu- a two-year community college, uh, you know, little endeavor could cost you anywhere from six to seven thousand dollars. All right, at, at the most. And if it's any more than that, you might as well just go ahead and get a job and work your way up to manager because it's too much money. But you know, six to seven thousand dollars, you can get yourself a credited education that actually transfers to a university. Yeah, the Kaplan's and ITT Tech. These, these damn things don't. You think that they're going to transfer to you know higher education uh, institutions like you know Stanford or you know I, I don't know any of these other dumbass little universities that idiots want to go to? No, it's not going to transfer. So you paid, or not you, the American taxpayer paid seventeen thousand dollars for you morons to you know get a little. I don't know, pussy whip little degree that was printed out of the same printer that's in my uh, office over here so that you can change bedpans for $8 an hour when you could have changed bedpans without going to the damn school, the little technical school. Let me tell you something. These technical schools, folks, and I hate to get off on a rant on these technical schools, but uh, it, it bears uh, you know ranting about. Uh, these technical schools actually are nothing more than pussy pampering institutions. Uh, you know, they take losers off the street who are financial aid eligible. Uh, they bring them into these little stupid institutions, and they actually, you know, like, give them kudos for doing the most simplistic, mundane tasks. All right? I mean, you, you know, if you happen to save a file into your My Documents little folder, you know, everybody in the classroom at these institutions are like, Yay, look at him, he did it! He's going places, he saved the file! You know, I mean, when these idiots realize, you know, how to put in formulas on a spreadsheet, they're like, yay, look at them, they're going to be something someday. When they learn how to, you know, use a spell checker or something, I mean, these are these dumbass tech schools. So my advice to you young people out here that are, you know, putting yourselves into tremendous debt, hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans, before you even get into the employment game, uh, I strongly advise you to not do that, and I, I, I strongly advise you to, I, I don't know, uh, reverse that thinking and reverse that process, because look at all the examples. And they're on YouTube, folks. I mean, you've got individuals showing you their checks. You know, they're still living with their parents. They're showing, they're getting docked this out of their check because of all the deferments and, and, and all the lack of economic opportunity out here. They can't get a job after college. So they're out here, you know, working at Starbucks Coffee House or at McDonald's, and because they still have to, uh, you know, pay back that student loan, well, the student loan is making sure they get it docked out of their check. Unbelievable. Anyway, 646-652-4869, I want to hear from you. What do you have to say about this crap? 917, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Gold? This is Tyrone. Uh, are you sure you sound like some uh, Eminem wannabe? Are you sure you're not? No, nah, man. Oh, you want to say thanks for paying for my for my for my welfare, man? What's up? Thanks for paying for your welfare. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. How, how much welfare are you getting from us? Like two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty, man. What's up? Yeah, get this idiot off of here. Get him off. <laughs> Give me a break. I mean, you know, if you're going to call up and sound like an ethnic minority, I mean, the least you could do is sound like an ethnic minority, for heaven's sake. I think that was an attempt at some of our brothers in the urban sector of our society. Uh, But, I mean, if you're going to try to sound like somebody from the urban community, I mean, why don't you try to sound like somebody from the urban community? I mean, if you want to sound like Tyrone, why don't you sound like Tyrone? Say, hey, what's up, man? You know what I'm saying? It's Tyrone up in this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? It's T-Bone. So they call me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Growing up in the hood, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I be listening to that 50 Cent, you know what I'm saying? On my mind, on my money, on my money, on my mind, man. You know what I'm saying? Got the ghetto bird up in this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Gia. I mean, why don't you sound something like that, all right? I mean, why don't you sound like that instead of, you know, Anyway, 845, you're on the air. Oh, man, you're, you're playing with your pecker. Anyway, uh, 601, you're on the air. Hey, guys, sorry about the delay earlier. Um, uh, don't worry about it. I was going to ask you about your thoughts on Ron Paul winning that, um, whatever it was at the CPAC convention. Uh, but I want to deviate from that uh, for a little bit. Earlier when we were on the, uh, the Toyota subject, um, you spoke in, a, in a, what I would consider a racially stereotypical uh, Asian voice, if you will. Uh, as as a representative of um, the true conservative um, ideal, the, the conservative movement, uh, do you feel that you've perpetuated any sort of a racial stereotype towards Asians? Uh, you know, you know what I'm I'm perpetuating. You know, whenever I you know conduct myself in a somewhat facetious manner, I, I, I'm attempting to be non politically correct. Okay. I mean, you know, I hear all the time in, you know, you know, black comedy shows, white or uh, Mexican comedy shows that, oh, honk it is, honk it, that cracker, 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 I kill a cracker, and all this other crap. But because I sound, you know, a little stereotypical when it comes to uh, our brothers from the Asian part of the world, all of a sudden, you know, you got some of these liberals that are getting their garter belts in their ass because, aw, that's not funny, ghost. That's not funny. You shouldn't say that about the Asian community. They don't know any better. All right? They eat raw fish. They don't know any better. So, look, I mean, I, I don't ever say any kind of racial slurs on my broadcast. Uh, but then again, I am not going to sit here and pander to any race. I think I think everybody is at my disposal for criticism. All right? I, I'm serious. I mean, I'm not too fond of white people, to be honest with you. I think white people are a bunch of idiots. I mean, look at the white people in today's America. I mean, we're, we're acting like complete morons. We're falling in line with some stupid Eskimo bimbo from Alaska named Sarah Palin who's not only ruined the whole idea of the conservative movement, but has made us all look like complete and utter imbeciles. You know, uh, I, actually, uh, I actually saw a YouTube clip of some dumbass running for Congress in Tennessee that actually, I don't know why he did this, but he actually created an advertisement based upon the writing that was on Sarah Palin's hand. You know? Sarah Palin's hand. You know that you know that she had all that crap written on her hand and all this crap, you know, she she keeps looking at her hand and this and that. There's an idiot that actually made an ad that was, you know, that that had uh, you know, some stupid little jewel song that said, "Your hand is all I me." And, and, and while this song's going on, you have dumb, pasty, white-thighed, honky assholes, uh, you know, putting their hands up uh, with stupid little sayings on it, as if that is somehow, I don't know, I, I, what is that supposed to represent exactly? What is that supposed to represent? Well, that, that what, we were backing up idiots? You know, that we're backing up complete and utter beauty queen bimbos? That we're, we're morons? I mean, it's disgusting, man. It's just completely idiotic, man. I mean, I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, this is why I'm saying, folks, I mean, if you think I'm a racist, well, I don't give a crap, all right? I don't care. You know what, folks? I don't care if I get ratings. I don't care if people listen to me. I don't care. What I do care about is that the individuals who are truly listening to my commentary, the individuals who understand the substance within my particular rhetoric, you can understand that we are at a precarious time in our American history. Ignorance is running rampant in our country. It's a disease, folks. It's a freaking disease. And it's not, it's not holding any punches on anybody, folks. I mean, look at the, the conservative movement. Look at, look at how destructive it is. 
Look, look, look at how in shambles it is. You got, you know, these Tea Party ass clowns out here. Oh, yeah, Sarah Palin, baby. I mean, these are the same Tea Party ass clowns during the little health care initiative crap that, you know, when they were trying to pass this health care crap and these damn liberals were going out having town hall meetings on the subject. You actually had these damn teabaggers uh, going to these events with misspelled picket signs and sweat stained, shit stained t shirts and a Dale Earnhardt bandana with shorts and a flip flops. I mean, how are we supposed to take people who look like trash serious? And then the Scott Brown scenario. I mean, I know I went uh, a little off on that last night, but folks, I mean, this bears repeating for heaven's sake. I mean, after Scott Brown was elected, I was the only conservative commentator that was critical of this stupid liberal piece of crap. All right? I was the only one! Look back in the archive and look back in the blog. I knew this idiot was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But no, you had all the conservative commentators that are making all these millions of dollars like Savage and Beck and that bald asshole Mark Levin that are out here saying, yeah, right after Scott Brown was elected, these idiots were yelling on their programs, yay, we're taking our country back, we're taking our country back, yay, the conservative movement is back. Now look at these morons. I mean, you got Scott Brown siding with Harry Reid. Harry Reid! Scary Harry Reid! I mean, where's Mark Levin, uh, uh, Savage, uh, uh, back now? Where, where, where the hell are they at? I thought we were taking our country back. Remember that, huh? You want to forget about that, don't you, you piece of crap? I challenge every single one of those conservative pieces of trash, all right? I challenge uh, Savage, I challenge Beck, and Beck's not a conservative, he's a libertarian asshole. And I challenge Mark Levin, if you think you've got the balls, all right, if you think that you have the political substance to battle wits with me, I challenge you, I will take you on any place, any time, anywhere, and I will make you look like a mental midget. I will make you look lower than a leprechaun's nutsack, and that's pretty damn low. Because I have politically prognosticated all the chain of events that has led up to this current state in America. And if you don't believe me, take a look at the archive. I guarantee you when the historians look back upon the records of this time, they're going to come across the true conservative radio program. They're going to look at the dates. They're going to look at the times. And they're going to look at the prognostications that yours truly has been making over and over and over again for the past three and a half, four years. You stupid pieces of gum! And nobody's listening! Nobody's listening and nobody cares! Nobody's listening and nobody cares! And that's what gets me angry! It gets me angry! God damn it! makes me sick. I mean, what about you people? I mean, you hear me scream every single time I conduct this broadcast. Well, what about you? What about the American taxpayer? What about the true concern out there? What about you? Folks, we can no longer stay on the sidelines anymore. The time is getting more and more serious. It's getting more and more serious, folks, and I'm not joking. We are in the we are in the beginning stages of this pending American loser revolution. And that means these losers are going to rise up and become violent. They're going to destabilize our great country because they can no longer attain those great materials that they worship, that they have a fetish for. They understand that they're no longer going to be the big star. They're no longer going to be the big rich person. So they want to ruin the opportunities for everybody else. And this is a sick mentality. It's sick! It's sick! And I'm telling you folks, if you're a true conservative, you're an American taxpayer, these words are serious as a heart attack. You better prepare yourself for anything. For anything, folks. I mean, you've got losers flying planes into buildings! American losers are flying planes into buildings! 
I mean, what the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on here? I'm sorry, folks. I'm getting a little out of hand. And my chest hurts. And uh, I'm having trouble breathing, folks. But you know what? I don't care! I don't care! Do you understand that it hurts to wake up every morning? It works! It hurts to wake up every morning to see these disgusting, despicable, sour scowls. It makes me sick. It gets me angry. This pending American loser revolution. I mean, what are we going to do, folks? What is the American taxpayer going to do? What are the law-abiding citizens of America going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do, Cortex? <laughs> Am I still on the air, folks? still on the air. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Let me calm down here. 646. <laughs> Take a few calls here. Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call here. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm 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 just I'm just here and, and I'm just going a little berserk here, folks. But I just can't believe what's happening to our great country. I can't believe what's happening here in America, and it seems like nobody nobody gives a crap. Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call here. I'm gonna take a few callers. Uh, eight three one, you're on the air. Ghost, you there? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, don't kill yourself. Anyway, I had a few questions to ask you. Go Let's ahead. Talk. This has been bugging me for a while. Are you hitting a bunch of beer cans? Like, when you're making a bunch of noise, what are you hitting exactly? Because you always seem to hit something. I'm breaking crap that's in this room. I got I got a room dedicated to this program. Do you understand that? I mean, it's wrecked up. I mean, I'll even show some pictures of it if there's enough requests for it. 
I mean, let me tell you something. I get very angry. I mean, this is disturbing. I cannot believe that I have lived the conservative lifestyle all my life. And to sit here and have these losers in America ruin it for my children and ruin it for my grandchildren, it makes me sick. So I break a few things from now on. As a matter of fact, I mean, if some of these liberals were in here, I'd, I'd wind up choking a few of them, for heaven's sake. Well, anyway, go go ahead. I, I'd love to see a picture just because it's, uh, it's been bugging me for a while. Second thing, thank you for the phone call that you gave me at like 3.40 in the morning about two weeks ago. Really, it made my day knowing that you called my phone and I had a message just, just from you, from me, in the morning on the walk to school. It made my morning. What, what, what are you what are you talking about, you moron? Get this, get him off! I mean, do you understand what's going? on? I got internet butt stalkers in here now saying, "Oh yeah, thank you for calling me, Ghost. I I loved it. Oh oh god. Oh, I shut your mouth. Shut your stupid mouth. All right. I mean, this is what we're doing here in America. This is the kind of youth that we're producing out here in America." Disgusting internet butt stalkers, for heaven's sake. I wouldn't be surprised if he's whacking off the naked pictures of Ricky Martin's butt crack. Give me a goddamn break. 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. All right? And I'd like for everybody to please give me a call and, and you know, say something worthwhile, for heaven's sake. Say something worthwhile. All right? Uh, secondly, let's go ahead and move on to the next subject matter while we're at it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch my breath. you got to excuse me, folks. I mean, my, my head's throbbing. I mean, this vein on the pop of my, on, on the side of my temples here, it's just throbbing out. I mean, I, I just, I'm looking in the mirror here, looking at it. It looks literally disgusting. Uh, this definitely can't be something healthy. But you know what, folks? I don't give a rat's ass. I, I don't really give two rat's asses. All right, I mean, if I die on this program this evening, hopefully it will imprint in your mind that it is necessary for you to do something. It is necessary for you to halt or attempt to thwart this attempt at an American loser revolution. We need to thwart this, all right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Anyway, folks, I want to go ahead and I want to talk about the last subject matter and uh, I didn't want to give her too much time, but I'm talking about Octo Whore. I mean Octo Mom. That's right. I'm talking a little bit about Octo Mom over here. And the reason I'm talking about Octo Mom is because, well, you know, she's uh, of course running the gambit in her little media circus. Uh, you know, she's out here, uh, you know, going doing interviews. Uh, you know, she was doing an interview with Barbara Whoa Whoa, uh, and you know, and and those stupid menopause infected bimbos on the view she went on there and you know you know trying to say oh yeah i'm having such a great life being an octo whore and yeah yeah it's so great and and of course she had barbara walters and you know that stupid you know rasta ganja broad whoopi goldberg and and all these other bimbos creaming out their pants because old octo whore was on her show and you know they were acting as if this was such a progress for woman enlightenment, as if this was progress for woman's suffrage, uh, you know, some idiot bimbo that was able to have some mad scientist stick a turkey baster up her uterus pipe and artificially impregnate her with eight kids. That, that's supposedly some sort of great contribution to women. Yeah, that, that, that's what it is right there, folks. This is America. This is America. Thanks to feminism and, and, and all this ridiculous, glorious Steinem, uh, bull nose, bull dyke, muff diving garbage. We now have, you know, these, you know, menopause infected whores on the view actually giving embrace to this ridiculous octo whore who not only got, uh, you know, of course, artificially inseminated by some mad scientist with eight kids, but she got 16 kids total. I mean, 16 kids total, folks, and she doesn't have a job. You know, I mean, and this is the type of America that we're doing. This is what we're doing socially. That is ruining this country. Do you understand that the reason a lot of these idiots are going uh, crazy and, uh, and can't live without their materials is a lot to do with the fact that the family has been destroyed? They have no family. You know, they have no family whatsoever because it's been destroyed by feminism. It's been destroyed by ideas like that bimbo octo mom. 
And let me tell you something, uh, you know, Octomom, you know, she's going out here prancing her, you know, uh, circ, uh, her, 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 what do we call that? The cesarean scarred stomach of hers on all these little magazines. Like, oh, look at me now, I can wear a bikini. Look at me, I can wear a bikini. And I shitted out 16 kids out of this uterus hole. Yeah, great, this is what I'm doing. Thank you, American taxpayers. Keep paying your taxes. So me and my 16 kids, who I don't even take care of most of the time, but, but me and my 16 kids can continue to live large. Yes, thank you. As a matter of fact, the reason I bring her up, folks, is because she alluded in this ridiculous VIEW program that she's open to have another kid. That's right. They are, they're open to have, she's open to have another kid, folks. This is octo whore on her latest interview, that she is ready and, and, and the possibility of having a kid when she gets married. Of course, that's what she said. When she gets married. You know, that's what she said. She's, gonna, she, she's opened the opportunity to have another kid when, when she finds that man of her dreams, whatever idiot numbskull will actually, you know, give this, you know, loose Lucy slut bag the time of day and actually, you know, take care of 16 mouths to feed. Uh, but lo and behold, she says she's open to have another child with some other loser out here. And you see, this is the America that we're living in today. All right? This is the America that we are living in today when we have women, and because of the feminist movement, because of this warped sense of you know equating woman liberation with shitting out six or seven kids from six or seven different fathers, for equating woman liberation from hopping from penis to penis to penis and calling that woman liberation, equating woman liberation uh, to you know, ha- you know having seven or eight different divorces and changing divorces like they're changing dirty, shitty, skid-marked underwear. That's all woman liberation, thanks to these Gloria Steinem muff divers. And that's why I'm saying, folks, after every broadcast that I conduct on the Blog Talk Radio Network, I say death to feminism, because it needs to be destroyed, folks. And what's keeping feminism alive, anyway? It's our bureaucratic system of government, folks. Our bureaucratic system of government has been hijacked by a bunch of leftist ideologues, and they're utilizing this system of government to destroy itself. Because these are ideologues, folks. They actually believe in this leftist concept, this this communist idea. And it's no coincidence that you've got this leftist, liberal, and feminist Hollywood suggesting to you certain images of life that doesn't exist. You know, uh, I mean, in every one of these stupid movies that you see, you know, they're suggesting to you in your subconscious while you're just sitting there like a jerk off, they're suggesting to you how life should be. Meanwhile, you morons are going out trying to achieve this image embedded by Hollywood. You're trying to achieve this idea of life that's unachievable, and then when you finally realize that you can't achieve it, lo and behold, you have a loser revolution that you're having here pending uh, who the hell knows when it could spawn off, but we already have acts of terror being conducted by losers in America, and I think that's uh, it's disgusting. we got seven minutes left, 646-652-4869. We're going to take one more caller, 660, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, this is the Outrageous Riot from uh, Springfield, Illinois. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, first-time listener, I've already followed you on Twitter and uh followed your blog i appreciate it but uh yeah speaking of octomom i mean that it's pretty bad how uh america has been become they got the welfare mentality they pop out eight ten twelve kids and they don't even go out and get a fucking job no of course not uh, of course they don't yeah, and, they, and, on they, t- and on top of not getting a job there are jobs available now. I mean, you know, the, 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 I'm not saying that the economy is rebounded by any means, but uh, I've looked at Craigslist's uh, jobs, uh, you know, in a variety of different cities, and there's jobs available. But you want to know why there, there's a lot of jobs available now? Because everybody's collecting the damn government entitlement. Everybody's yeah, collecting that, unemployment. That, Everybody realizes that they can get $1,500 a month from Social Security and, and, and all these other medical programs by claiming that, you know, you've got multiple personality disorder. 
or claiming that you got fibromyalgia, or you know, it, it hurts when you take a piss or something. I, I mean, these, this is how these people are getting by in life, and it's a disgrace. I think we need to end all these damn entitlements. It's just that's all there is to it. Yeah, look at all the people that's uh, uh, popping up all these kids, and then the, even though the doctors don't prove anything, they say the kids got bipolar disorder, they got ADHD, or all kinds of bullshit like that. Uh, I can autism. Understand if, autism. I can, I, I can. I can. I can understand if uh, if it's. If they're paralyzed from the waist down, if the kid, you know, paralyzed or something like that, I can completely understand that. I mean, he can't do too much, but if it's bipolar disorder or something that can actually be uh, controlled, you don't need to get a fucking check. Uh, and, you know, what's really unfortunate, sir, is that not everybody has the mental capacity to come to that simple realization and what's really unfortunate is that instead of, you know, actually rationally coming to the conclusion that what we need to do is we need to, uh, you know, cut down on all this ridiculous uh, government spending, we need to reverse our mental, our mental thinking or our mental perceptions of political correctness. I think we need to just shove political correctness down a dirty uh, carnival urinal and make sure it stays there for life. Because we don't need any more of this crap. I mean, look, this is America. This is the this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And if you don't like right. what somebody if you don't like what somebody's saying, then get the hell out of here. Go somewhere else. You know what I have a problem with is you have you know the liberals who push the boundaries of freedom of speech and have things like gay pride parades where they have oral copulation between two men across the street from an elementary school, and they want to protect that by the First Amendment. You know, they want to protect these sick, demented ideas by the First Amendment, and lo and behold, we're supposed to just take it up the tailpipe and say, yes, sir, can we have another? Yes, sir, can we have another? It's a, dis- it's a disgrace. Now, I, once again, I'm not trying, and I want to thank that caller for uh, calling, by the way, but I am not talking against the gay community. Once again, I have a lot of gay conservative listeners, believe it or not. All right? They understand that this sexual deviant behavior that's being promoted by the gay agenda is not something that is going to give their cause any credibility for a long-term uh, integration with the community at hand. They understand this. So that's why they continue to listen, and I want to thank them, because they understand that homosexuals, gay people, and I'm talking about real gay people, not these idiots who are servicing glory holes because, well, they're sexual perverts or something. I'm talking about these individuals who are out here that understand that, hey, they want to be with – uh, you know, the same sex because of whatever. They're both working, taxpaying individuals, and, you know, these idiots want to do whatever it is they do in the privacy of their own home. I have nothing to do with this. I have nothing wrong with this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I just don't want it out in the open, all right? I don't want, uh, you know, two males in a park bathroom somewhere giving each other a rim job out in the open when, you know, kids, uh, you know, taking a trip uh, for school or something happen to walk in on these two sick perverts. All right, and, and, but but you see, you want these, they want this pro- crap protected by the First Amendment. They want it protected by the First Amendment. So uh, once again, the homosexuals that are conservatives, that are listeners to my program, they understand where I'm coming from. They understand that they are bearing the tax burden, that they are bearing the tax burden for all the breeders. And that, that's what they call individuals who have children in the gay community, breeders. They're paying for all the breeders out here in America, and what I'm saying to the homosexual community is don't vote with your emotionalism. All right? Don't vote for, oh, look, gay rights. Me, 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 me. Look, you are now protected. You know, there's hate crime bills. Uh, you know, there, there's certain legalities now that will protect you against violent acts of uh, bigotry. So for you to sit here and suggest that you're still an oppressed group, is, it's just, it's, it's enough. All right, that's enough. What you need to do is start voting your pocketbook and start realizing that octo whores and these dirty, dishrag, disgusting slut bags that are out here shitting out children like they're shitting out Cabbage Patch dolls out of an assembly line, uh, you know, these are the individuals that are taking your money, that are taking your tax dollars. So think about that for a second, folks. Anyway, we got one minute left in the program. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Please spread the word about the True Conservative Radio program through the email, through tweets, Facebook, MySpace, all the social networking sites, chat rooms, forums, whatever the case might be. 
because, folks, I don't advertise this show. This show is complete word of mouth. I've never advertised this show. And I want to thank everybody who has spread the word about the True Conservative Radio Program. I want to thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank you very much. Uh, please bookmark or add to your favorites the official True Conservative Radio Show website at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And uh, send me some comments on the blogs and, and, and all my content, folks. I love hearing feedback. And once again, folks, uh, add me to your Twitter following, all right? Ghost Politics is the name to follow. No underscores, no spaces, nothing like that. Ghost Politics. And once again, folks, if you want to shoot me a line through email, if you've got something personal to say, give me a line, ghostpolitics at yahoo.com. Once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I don't know when I'm going to have another show. I may or may not have one tomorrow. Uh, send me some tweets. Inspire me to do another show tomorrow, okay? I mean, let me know that you're listening. Hello? Is anything on? Is this thing on? I want to hear from you. Ghost politics, all right? Uh, send me some tweets, and we'll see if we have another show. Long live the true conservative movement, and death, death, death to feminism. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.